uh, in order to calibrate your electronic, from time to time when you see that something is, is doesn't quite match what you are expecting, okay, so, so you run a calibration it's purely automatically. Thing to determine this liquid oh yes, okay. no, no, because you have a one photo tube that is gaining more. Mm. Of those photo tubes that I received, mm -hmm. I think that I haven't checked all of them, but I don't think that mm -hmm. anyone has the same, yeah. no one has the same voltage. Right. You get a better uh, voltage for every photo. Mm -hmm. This is why I use the kind uh, power supply that can be adjusted uh, uh, individually. Jerry, uh, what's your oh, his, two, his two numbers are like, let me go look at it. This, this one case, taking the dosage that they said and the time that they said and multiplying by the famous 3.7 heads, at the end of the 10th, I think it is. Uh, and then he has 35 uh, sensors and uh, so. The, the, these are the, the, this is the spec, the performance, and these are the 35. Uh, uh, well, anyway, taking the number of part, number of counts he said he got and divided by the <coughs> number of counts that he could have got. That's uh, that's 0 0.027 percent in this case, and this other case is 0 0.012 percent. So both of those are representative of what he's talking about. Uh, many years ago, this uh, standard uh, norm, they there was still confusion because one was uh, using a phantom uh, 20 centimeter long, 20 centimeter diameter, another one 18, another one another dimension. And so it was difficult for me to read one paper and how can I correlate this data with the other paper that is using another phantom. Mm -hmm. But now uh, they are, these phantom are getting more and more sophisticated, very close to the sh uh, human shape. Yeah. And not only but uh, with the blood flow inside that uh, mm -hmm. is, is getting closer and closer to well, the real uh, situation of the, of the blood flow. In a clinical setting though, one does a, what they call a blank, where no one's in the scanner. They'll run, they have a, a pin source of a positron emitting radio ah, okay. It rotates around and it measures the, re and each of the detectors, the responses are measured and it normalizes all the detectors. It automatically detects, adjusts the gains in the detectors so that all of, ideally all of the detectors are uh, responding normally. So there's no bias what you in how yeah, exactly the detector pairs are, are responding. Mm -hmm. And this is done as a QC daily check well, when the technician comes in and does this normal. And we do think it's uh, mm -hmm. it's better than So, better so you have the capability of mm -hmm. changing your lookup table. Yeah, yeah. the lookup table are in memory. <coughs> right. yeah. And those uh, uh, can be changed uh, and there is no way, even at CERN, an experiment that never did those by, by hand. <laughs> those must be a, an automatic process. Again, that's something that, that's based on what you're trying to do, this is something that's built onto the, the as part of the uh, well, no, operating this has to be No, this has to be done. For but this. it has to be done. Yeah. yeah. It has to be done if he doesn't have a look up table to discriminate. Mm -hmm. That last, see the thing that was bothering me was the one next to the bottom, efficient photon identification. I don't know how do you do that? Uh, mm -hmm. The way he's doing it is different from the analog way. So the question is, that's part of the 95% pressure percent. And that's part of how well that his A to D works and how well the sum, summing it all up and, mm -hmm. and discriminating. Well, given it, given that it works the way Dario feels it should, uh, is there any other questions on any of the other steps here? Yeah, you, you can address one by one, and, and let's go over one by one. The first one is uh, we are getting only 15% out. And uh, I was saying on this, uh, I, I put some reference there. Can you look at the text? There are some reference on the text. And uh, one of this reference, you see, is a detector. 
in one of these reference, uh, I take this because it's very comprehensive and uh, it is on everything is summarized on the table. Is from uh, Tumay Tumer, Riverside, California, and uh, he's describing a detector here, and then he goes through all the. Let me see a trade inside. Uh, yeah. So if you can pass this around, and that should answer the the first question. That approximately, and you can never give a, an exact number because it depends on the size of the person too. So this is the table. And the table, it says how many photons are generated and how many do you get in, in time, for instance. So I, I know that I also verify this with other documents that I, I am correct and also I received an email that I showed to you and it's, it's matching this, uh, uh, this. So the first that is, uh, let's say, the most uh, difficult to calculate, but there are many sources that are agree on this uh, reduction. And then the other is that we can't calculate ourselves because it's just arithmetic and it's a percentage, solid angle, field of view, and uh, uh, let's see. Well, the field of view is just a, a ratio of yeah. Of the uh, amount of the body that's covered by the detector, right? This yes. The field of view is, uh, is uh, simply uh, uh, how much of the, of the total body is covered. So that's that's pretty simple. Uh -huh. And the solid angle calculation is simply the same. Yeah. Yeah. Was well, Jerry's raised a, I think a valid point here in this. Uh, 95 percent uh, field of view, but uh, still there's, granted, even if you're only looking at one organ, uh, uh, the rest of it is free, sure. but still you have to compare apples to apples, and uh, and if you're only looking at the heart, but you still have a better yeah. advantage. But this is calculated on the basis of the full body. Then, yeah. then that number is valid. That number's good. If you want to look at the brain, the particle that's coming from the knee, does that contribute? It doesn't. So, from a packaging standpoint to the payers, at what point, at what point, if you want to look at the head, or you want to look at the heart, at what point down and what point up, beyond that you're not going to get any inf further information from photons anyway, so you can just say I'm going to do... Well, I don't exclude that uh, that patient may have a cancer developed in some lower part of the body. That's a great thing. Yeah, that's great. And, and uh, that's perfect. If, uh, you get the benefit of it. Yeah, you get yeah. the benefit of a total body scan every yeah. time we do it, we're looking for cer certain organs mm -hmm. for you. And because you receive the radiation, just use it. Exactly. That's excellent. Uh, don't, don't go another time to, uh, because exactly. next week you get some symptoms exactly. in another place. Yeah, and you have to go back and, and get another scan. Exactly. No, exactly. you just exactly. get it. You go you, you look should. for the specific and then yeah. get the rest of the screening. Exactly. Yeah. Perfect. You, you should you go there. And you should go there every year. I think the, the, as long as the cost is going to be the same. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And you are getting something for free. Yeah. 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 Exactly. You don't that. So is everybody happy so far? Well, once you dedicated the architecture of machines to in a certain way, the increment to go full body instead of say half body is not a big deal. Right? Exactly. Uh, that is the other question that I in place. Uh, if you look at some architecture of the electronic of the hardware, especially the one that is, is currently used for the, uh, the coincidence detection, then if you increase the number of elements, the comparison, because they compare everything, mm -hmm. even if there is n no mm -hmm. hit, okay? Instead with mine, the comparison is related to the radiation. 